Tuesday, November 8th, 2011. And my name's AJ Goldsby. I'm a life master from Pensacola, Florida. And I was just going over some games on the Chess Games website. And one in particular struck my attention. Uh, the game today was a game of by uh, Czechoslovakian, or former Czechoslovakian grandmaster, Lubomir Taknik, spelled F-T-A-C-N-I-K. And um, this got me to looking through a few of his games, and I came across another of his games. It's uh, Lev Polygievsky, Polygievsky versus uh, Taknik, and it's from the Luzerne, uh, the Lucerne or Luzerne Olympiad, men's Olympiad, in 1982, and Taknik won a very brilliant game as black. And I had discovered that I had spent a few days, uh, annotated the game, but I had never bothered to make a web page out of it or even post my analysis. And I thought, really, that was just a waste. And also, too, that I wouldn't mind um, going ahead and uh, making a video out of this game. I thought that would be the simplest way to do things. Uh, this game has been annotated by Grandmaster Technique in uh, the um, Informant series, Informant number 35, which I have, and it's game number 50. So if you want to look at it and see and compare his annotations to mine, you can do that. But anyway, let's get on and take a look at this game because it is an extremely interesting game. And I do have the board inverted here so that you can see the board from Black's position. I wanted you to be able to see the board pretty much from Black's position. Anyway, the game starts off as a ready. And of course, very transpositional. Grandmasters often use knight f3 on the first move, but it can tra transpose very easily into just about any other opening. Black plays knight f6. White plays c4, c5. And now we pretty much have a... Uh, symmetrical English and however of course it, it's going to transpose again uh, white soon going to play d4 and we're going to basically transpose into a Marazzi bind type of, of Sicilian pawn structure but anyway going on with the game white plays knight c3 black plays e6 at this point we're just doing simple development white plays g3 b6 five bishop g2 bishop b7 black castles bishop b7 White now plays d4. This is an important pawn break. And black, of course, plays c takes d4. And now the pawn structure is more like a Sicilian-type pawn structure, although white doesn't normally have this fianchettoed um, king bishop. Usually his king bishop's on e2, and that would be a true Marazzi bind. But, you know, you know, white could play something like knight d2, f3, e4, and we would have the same, basically the same type of pawn structure. It's just the pieces would be arranged a little bit differently. Now, white really has a, uh, two choices of captures here. Uh, the choices of captures are to take on d4 with the knight or with the queen. And it was really interesting here to see that Pologievsky's choice here was uh, queen takes d4. I would have expected knight takes d4. That seemed to be the indica indicated move. And after knight takes d4, though, however, this allows black to exchange his, you know, fianchetto bishop and get rid of white's bishop. And since this bishop is in front of the white king, maybe black's a little bit happier with this exchange than white would be. But anyway, the play could have proceeded. Bishop takes g2, king takes g2, queen c7, and queen d3. And according, I have a check this analysis with both Fritz 12 and Houdini 1.5 and several other engines also. But uh, according to this, white's just a little bit better here in this position. He has a slightly more freer position. Again, I think one plan for white would be maybe just play e4 and f4 and you know just dominate the center and he could also develop his bishop say to f4 with a gain of time or even g5 or even play h3 and, and bishop e3 and put his rooks in the center here either e1 or d1 or d1 and c1 and that white would be a little bit better here but going back to the game after white played white just played d4 here on move seven black took with a pawn white decided to play queen takes d4 when i first saw this i was a little bit taken aback by this i thought you know, wow, this is, but this is uh, the same type of capture. This is actually a favorite move in the uh, uh, these types of formations for Polygievsky. If you want to see another example of uh, Polygievsky as white playing queen takes d4, uh, you should see his famous game, Polygievsky versus Nezhmetinov, or Nezhmetinov. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But it's a very famous brilliancy, and you can find my, um, uh, you can find that. I have a webpage on that game. Uh, Nezhmetdinov won a very brilliant uh, uh, game of chess, one of perhaps his 
most brilliant game ever. And I, like I said, I have a web page on that game. You could find it very eagle, uh, very easily, simply by googling uh, the two players and uh, uh, chess, and also my last name, and that should bring up the web page without any problem. But anyway, back to this game here. Polygevsky plays queen takes d4, and as I said, I was a little bit shocked by that move. You know, a little bit taken aback by that move. Um, it's a surprising move because he's going to be bringing out his queen early, and now Black could easily develop his knight to c6 and get a free tempo, but he actually avoids doing that. He plays d6, nine rook d1, black plays a6. He's worried about, you know, white playing knight b5, obviously. And basically what I, my comment here is that Toknik, or Toknik, uh, risks little here by, uh, risks a little by employing the now popular hedgehog formation, but he shows that by doing this, he is probably playing for a win. And going on with the game, white plays b3, knight bd7, e4, queen b8, and here, black play, white plays, rather, not black, white plays, bishop to b2. And this move could be an, inaccurate later after the game. Both Grandmasters Toknik and Pulegievsky both pointed out that uh, bishop a3 was probably a slightly better move. That would have given white distinct pressure here on this d6 square. It's not even clear how black managed to, well, he'll play knight c5 and save the pawn, but, you know, white re retains a, trend, a tremendous amount of pressure in both Fritz 12 and all the engines picked that move as well. But anyway, back to the game. White plays kind of a routine move there with bishop b2, but it's not bad at all. Black castles, knight d2, rook d8. Now, apparently rook d8 was actually a theoretical novelty, and this is a court, according to Tocnique's own annotations in the informant. But at that time that the game was actually played, rook d8 was the first new move of the game. It's a theoretical novelty. White plays a4. I didn't really like that move too much there, the A4 move here. This weakens a whole host of squares here on, you know, black puts a knight on C5. And, you know, it's if he can play A5 and knight C5, it becomes very difficult for white to, to do anything. And also, too, it just leaves a hole here on B4 and gives black a nice outpost on C5. And in the game, white weakens his pawn structure basically on both sides of the board. And this is basically what leads to his undoing. But anyway, continuing on with the game, we have queen C7, queen E3. Black plays RAC8. And now, according to all the computer programs, black is pretty much equalized. And it says one of the nice things, this is my own comment here, one of the nice things about this system, i.e. the uh, hedgehog uh, type Sicilian type formation for black, which you can play from an English or a Sicilian, and actually from a number of different systems. You can basically just head for the structure, putting your bishop on E7, your fianchetto, your light squared bishop, you have these four pawns here on e6, d6, b6, and a6, and black's knights usually go to f6, d7, and then the rooks go on d8 and c8, and the queen usually goes on c7 or b8, but this is a standard hedgehog type of setup for black. And it says one of the nice things about the system for black is that he can play for a win. This game clearly demonstrates that it is not so easy for white to break down all of black's resistance in these lines. The first party has to be patient, play extremely, extremely accurately, and not make any mistakes in order to win. But continuing on with the game, white plays queen e2, black plays knight e5, and now white plays h3, and this is actually a very bad move here. Uh, Toknik in his own annotations in the informant gives that move a question mark. I gave it simply a dubious because it didn't really violently throw off the machine's evaluations. It just made things a little worse for, for white, but it was definitely an inaccuracy. f4 was probably correct here for white, 17 f4. White played h3, and black plays h5, exclam. And uh, going back a move here on, after knight e5, Fritz liked h5 here and instead of knight e5. I actually liked black's move, the grandmaster's move, much better because it's a much more active move. And then after h3, h5, exclam, uh, my comment is, so now he plays it. But anyway, white continues f4, and black goes knight g6 here. And this position here is uh, very close to equal. Maybe black is just a tiny bit better here. But the evaluation isn't so large as to uh, to make the game a decisive advantage for uh, black by any means. Not yet. Not at this point. But anyway, now black plays d5. This is a very brilliant break in the center. And now black continues on onwards here. He continues with the d5 break. This is this is a very thematic break. It's I gave it an exclam. Toknik gave it an exclam or Toknik, however you pronounce his name. And also uh, uh, several books that I have, is, uh, this game is also in several books about brilliant chess. And they also, the authors of those books also awarded this move an exclam. And this is just a thematic break for black. 
is generally, you know, if there's no rook sitting here and the queen doesn't have to worry about discovery, this d5 pawn break, this d6, d5 pawn break that black manages to get in here, this is really what is going to completely free black's game because, you know, he gets this in here and, you know, he affects these squares, both e4 and c4, and basically breaks down white's clamp in the center there, and that's the most important thing about that entire pawn break there is the fact that, you know, white has, base, black has liberated its position. White's clamp on the center has been pretty much destroyed here at this point. But, um, excuse me while I save that, I wanted to save that change because that's a necessary graphic that really clearly illustrates just how black has broken out of his, his bind here at this position. And now continuing on with the game, as I said, black's last move was d5, breaking free from white's clamp here and just basically threatening to take on c4 and win a pawn. Black plays c takes d5, and in my move that was clearly an error, and Tachnik, I believe, gives that a, a either a question mark or an inferior in his annotation. I believe an inferior in his annotations in the informant. I have the informant here opened off to one side, and uh, he shows he gives that the uh, an inferior appellation or, or um, mark, if you will. He grades that as an inferior move. But uh, um, Polygivsky plays c takes d5, Probably the best line, according to computer analysis, would have been c takes d5, e takes d5, knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, rook c1, bishop c5 check, king h1, a5, and knight g5. And, and this is probably really just an unclear position. Um, the computers tend to award white just a little bit of an advantage here. I mean, I'm sorry, black just a little bit of an advantage here. But I think that is really premature. Um, it's just... It's just probably more unclear would be a better better way of uh, appraising this position. But anyway, going back to the game, uh, Polygievsky, Polygievsky, he played c takes d5, and that, that really gave um, uh, Tachnik a chance to show off his, his ta extreme tactical skill. He's a tremendous attacking master, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to uh, do a video on this game was because the, ta the tactics in this game are just absolutely incredible. But anyway, black now plays h4 here, and uh, that's just really a, a really nice move there. Uh, breaks down white's queen side, chips away at the entire quality of white's pawn structure. Uh, black had to take. He couldn't allow that. I mean, excuse me, white had to take. White could not allow black just to make that move for free. Black went ahead and exchanged knights there. Knight takes, g takes, queen takes f4. And here you don't really have to be a high-rated grandmaster to know that you know black's better. Uh, White's pawn structure, he's got these double pawns on the H-file. Looks like this pawn is pretty much doomed. Um, you know, and Black's a pawn ahead, and he has all of his pieces on really good squares. The bishop will come here with check. Uh, he has Black has tremendous pressure on this D5 square. He has one, two, three, four pieces hitting this square. Um, it's just really a much uh, better position for Black. In fact, the, the computers rate this as a winning position for Black. And I believe what I'm going to do there is go ahead and break this video up into two parts. And I'm going to stop there and just say thank you for watching this video. I'll continue this in part two. I'll make a second video, and this will be part two of the same game. And I will pick the game up from here because, to me, this is really going to be what's coming up next is, re next is really the most interesting part of the entire game. And I'll conclude and show the rest of the game, uh, continuing uh, picking up the game with move 22, queen takes f4. And just want to say thank you for watching this video. And if you like this video, you can also get a copy of this uh, printout, you know, which will show my annotations of the game. And I uh, also throw in the uh, um, um, the printout uh, of the informant, which I've you know transferred over to computer. I have the the two disc set, which is basically I think the uh, informants one through forty, and then forty through forty five. But anyway, I just wanted to thank you for watching this video. I'll, I'll pick this up with part two on this same game, starting with Black's move, Queen takes pawn on F4, and we'll pick up the game from there. Thank you and have a good day.